initially, I thought it was going to be like a high school coming of age story of white men can't jump. Uh, but I was really pleasantly surprised when it was really about basketball, but a lot about Shang's relationship with his family and how that affected him like most of us. Can you tell me about this concept and what inspired this and the importance of basketball in your story? Um, well, uh, for me, I think that like writing the film made me really reflect on my high school experiences. And that actually brought up uh, my relationship with my mother, which has evolved a lot over time. And um, what I realized, one of the biggest realizations that I think really helped me turn the, the film into what it is today is the fact that my mom was actually going through a lot of the same things that I was going through. She, you know, she, um, she had to go back to community college in order to get uh, a degree so that she could work in a hospital. And at the same time, I was in high school and we were actually experiencing the same things of not fitting in, feeling like an outsider. And, um, you know, we have all these frustrations and, and feeling like we're hitting a ceiling, you know, outside of the home. And then we would come home and somehow still not see each other. And mm -hmm. so I think that like, um, what I wanted to show was that like, something that's unique to, I think a lot of immigrant kids is uh, they, they're struggling with all these things at school, but then at home, they're struggling to be seen as well. And it's that dual sort of frustration that makes our experience unique and difficult. But in the end, it's something that we can we can sort of face and grow greatly out of, you know, and really heal our relationships with our with our parents. Well, Bloom, you did such a great job with your betrayal of Chang, like, you know, who's going through a lot of emotional and generational trauma. Um, did you feel like you connected with Chang's story and how, how was it really diving deep into his character? Um, yeah, I think a lot of what Jing says kind of applies to me as well. I think, I think my relationship with my parents throughout my life, it's obviously evolving over time, but has been complicated. And I think high school was kind of peak for that. Um, so I think I do relate, I did relate to Chang's, I mean, it, it wasn't like, it was I, when I read the script, I was like, "Oh, I understand this this character. Um, I understand these feelings. I understand these frustrations." And there's so many scenes in the movie that have like kind of parallels, um, especially with the mom, to like moments I've had in my life. Um, but getting into character-wise, it was even though like there are a lot of similarities, there are very stark differences as well. Um, so it was a lot of the process of just like reading the script and kind of. Uh, you know, remembering what it's like in high school when everything hurts more. Um, and I think that process was really interesting because it brought up like things that I hadn't kind of uh, dealt with or necessarily things I, I've forgotten about over time. Um, so it was a really good growing experience, both like artistically and also personally. Well, you know, there are so many themes from the story that I got, you know, about the friendship, persistence, determination, coming of age, um, family, generational guilt. That guilt line got me good. Like, I was like, oh, like, I was like, oh, you're just trying to make me feel guilty. And I was like, okay, that hit me hard. Uh, but what was the main takeaway for both of you for this story that you want audiences to take? I think, you know, uh, if you're looking at it, if you look at a lot of Asian American stories that are coming out, and, and I really do think that like there's this new wave of, of Asian American filmmakers that's really just killing it right now. Um, so many of those stories are about the the parent child dynamic, that relationship, that that there's something, there's a wound there that we're really trying to heal through telling these stories, right? And um, the thing that helped me was a pursuit of my own dream even if sometimes my parents didn't support me. And by pursuing what I wanted to do, I was able to empathize and sympathize with my parents a lot more, understand their journey, their struggles. And that helped me bridge my, my relationship with them in, in, a, in a very powerful way that has transformed you know, who I am and, and our fam my entire family's dynamic. And so I would say that like this film is about, it's about family very much, especially if you have disconnection and, and differences and how you can heal that and how it is possible to heal that. But especially if you, if you find something of your own that is your own that you can chase after. I think I want people to take away that. It's like, if they ever feel like they've, they're an underdog or like they're, they're having difficulty kind of, you know, 
making sense of life that like they hopefully they feel seen through this film and understand that they're the way out of it or like the way through it is like to trust your friends and like your family and like find support and like love. Well, you know, we're seeing a, a bit of a tie-in of between cultures, you know, Asians within the Black community and, and the culture with like Boogie and now Chang Kung Dunk. And I initially had the concern of watching the film, but was pleasantly surprised that I had little to do with basketball, more with self-worth and family. What discussions were there to ensure that it was appreciation rather than appropriation? Um, you know, I, I uh, there was a lot of discussion. There was a lot of observation. Um, I think ultimately it's really hard to make an American basketball film and not have uh, African-American characters mm -hmm. or some sort of African-American influence on the film. Um, one of the key inspirations for the dynamic between uh, the coach DeAndre and Chang is actually a YouTube video that went viral, I think like 10 years ago called 10,000 Hours. Mm -hmm. in which this uh, this basketball coach found these two Asian kids in a gym and just decided to train them and, and make a YouTube series about that. And that that really hit um, a lot of people around the country. And I saw that and I thought that was really, really powerful because it was it was it was representation of like someone reaching out across cultures and, and race to to give knowledge, to share knowledge. Um, and uh, and I saw that as a really powerful gift, because I think you know, as, as, as people of color, we are seeking help. We want people to see us and see what we're trying to do and, and help us. And for, to, to be able to tell a story where two cultures are doing that in a way, it's, um, it's, a, it's a gift, you know? And that's how ultimately I think societies evolve and cultures evolve, gifting. Yeah, no, of course, it's well, uh, well said. And you know what? Kobe, and I want to go to this because I'm almost, almost time is up, but Kobe plays a huge role in this story and he means a lot to a lot of us. Um, and what does he mean to you in the story and in life? And this is for both of you. And then this is a side note, Bloom, can you dunk it? Bloom is close, but if you want to know if Chan can dunk, you have to watch the movie. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Um, <laughs> but... He is, I mean, okay. I just want to say that he is very, very close, and uh, I believe in you, Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think Kobe's mentality, or what Kobe represents in the film, is just like Chang's role model of like a mindset, right? Like, a, like obviously, Mamba mentality, but kind of just like this perseverance, no matter what. You know, never backing down, like no matter what. No matter how many times um, Chang feels like he's failed or like loses, like he can still. He there's an example for him that, oh no, it's still possible to like get back up. Um, and yeah. Does he, what does he mean to you, Jamie? Oh, uh, Kobe? Yeah. Oh man. Um, you know, there's a line from the film, every obstacle is an opportunity. And um, I, it, it took me a long time to understand what that really meant. Um, because how can some of the bad things that happen to you be positive? You know, but watching Kobe and, and watching how he evolved over the course of his career and how he he always took things in stride, but he always took things as as lessons um, was really, really powerful. And I think that like without without hearing Kobe's story and, and, and seeing how he could push through and and be a champion and be a uh, be a role model, be a leader. Um, be a person who was always trying to improve himself. I don't know if I could have gone to where I am today directing this film. So uh, that 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 mama mentality works. <laughs> even like my less advanced version of it. I'm trying to get to Kobe level, um, mm -hmm. but even you know entry level mama mentality is very effective. Well, thank you guys so much, and I look forward to everyone seeing the <laughs> film. And seriously, thank you for featuring Lakers, a Kobe. There and you so go. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Boys, professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard knock life. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play, so check this.